Welcome to the Scale Model Club and on this week's show... This is a starter kit, so it has the instructions for paint on the back, not that we're following them. Let's see what's in the box. So you get your paints and the glue if, you, if, you, if this is the first kit you've ever built. So there you go. Not going to be using those. Let's see what's in the bag. The sprues. Instructions here are the decals. Only get one set of decals for one type of tank. Nicely printed. Nicely done. So this is going to be the first video in a set of videos about um, North Africa. So I'm going to do two Shermans, a Willys Jeep, a Scout car, a seven pounder, a brain gun, all in the desert for the Allies. A bit like the one I did for the um, Africa Corps the other year. Oh, the camera's a bit close there, see if I can sort that out. Here we go. So yeah, the brain gun carrier I did. Um, this is what sparked it off. I did that last a couple of weeks ago and thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'm going to put that on a diorama with some other Germans and other stuff that I'd acquired. I've uh, been wanting to do it for a while, really. But the Brain Gun Gallery was what kicked it off. Seeing as I actually painted it in desert colours. So. so the instructions are here. They're all pretty clear. Standard airfix instructions. Can't really go wrong, step by step. Awesome. Right, uh, mind your fingers, ladies and gentlemen. Always be careful, always get an adult to do that. So you've got two sprues. Uh, first sprue is the bottom hole which is the hole comes in three bits, well, four bits, because you've got the sides and the bottom, and then you've got the gearbox housing and the engine housing that all go together to make the hub. And then on the top of the hub goes the uh, top. So this is the other sprue. This houses these tracks that are all molded together, all the bogies and tracks together, and the turret and gun. I quite like the fact that they're all moulded together because although I did paint the majority, a little bit of them by um, paintbrush, um, I, as a modeler, because I, I primarily do aircraft, so as a modeler, tracks are, are irritating to me. Um, but I do understand that if you want realism, then you really want sort of you know, moulded tracks that you can put on yourself or rubbered ones that you can glue into position to give them weight and stuff. But I liked this the way it was. Um, I also think it's fantastic for a beginner or a younger person to get into airfix or tank building even. So cut them off the sprue with your side cutters, mind your fingers. And once they're off the sprue, or clean them up with your scalpel, mind your fingers and sand the last piece off with my 240 grit sandpaper and stick. Do, I do this every single thing with all the models I do, all the same, exactly the same, can't go wrong. Cut it off with the wire cutters and then clean them up with your sandpaper. Mm -hmm. 
So this I've not done one of these kits before, this is a new kit by Apex. As you can see the bottom has got a little cut out of the tank with a gun pointing forwards, that's so you know where the front of the vehicle is. Brilliant. Just in case you cut everything off the sprue and then think to yourself, ah, I'm not sure which way they should go round. As you can see, the little sticky out bits fit in the little sticky inny bits really well. Bit of glue, you don't, it, I didn't even have to hold it, just, they just stuck exactly where Airfix intended them to go. Brilliantly moulded. Same with the other side, cut it off. Clean it up with a knife or your sandpaper. Thanks everybody for watching and subscribing. Of course, nice to have you all here. One of these days I'll do this a little bit more professionally and I'll actually have like a script and stuff. Or I can just carry on waffling on. This is the Tanner Extra Thin Glue, it's fantastic stuff. Put your two bits of uh, plastic together, hold them where you want them, run the paintbrush down the line, and it will use capillary action to suck the glue into place and stick the two bits of uh, plastic together. So next is the engine cowling at the back and the gearbox cowling at the front. It's sanding, make sure that's going to go in the hole. exactly where you want it to. Pushed it into place. So years ago when I started and that would have been about whether you'd have been sat there with five different clamps before you could put the glue on it. But these days it's all computer generated and uh, moulded. Fits fantastic. This is the gearbox molding. Scrape that a little bit off the front there. Mind your fingers, everyone. Get that nice and clean bit of sand. Have a quick look. Sorry to get away from the camera. Had to just make sure I knew which way it went round. As it turns out, you can't really get it wrong. Although, you know, I'll give it a good go. Just slip that on the front. Excellent. Lovely. Always go around the joins afterwards, probably don't need to, but I always seem to think a little bit more glue can't hurt. Ah, that's the bottom hole, all done. So let's start with the top hole. Uh, oh, first we're going to put the uh, gearbox 
final drives in. Are they final drives? I don't know, whatever, whatever attaches the gearbox to the front wheels has that. To be too careful otherwise all the tank people will jump down you. Can't really get these the wrong way around either because they are also handed, but they, uh, if you get them the wrong way around, your tracks aren't going to fit on. But yeah, I think that pretty much, to be fair, I stood it in uh, and it sort of clipped in, and I thought, oh, that'd be about right. Not quite right. Or sanded. <laughs> So this is now the bottom hole done. So you've got the final drives, gearbox housing, engine housing, sides are all on. Um, the next thing I, I'm going to do is this, I, I don't actually know what this is for, it's like a cover that goes over the engine cowl. I'm assuming it lifts up if you want to get to something, well, I, don't, I don't know, I'm not quite too sure. But whatever happened, when you look at it, you, you're sort of, you think it must go near the top of the piece of plastic because uh, I'm not a I mean I, I build aircraft so I, I mean I, I could do a Spitfire with, with eyes closed because I've, I've built so many of them, Hurricanes, all the Messerschmitts all that kind of thing. Now whereas with tanks I don't build that many, I don't act you know A what the bits are called and see where they act they're supposed to go on the vehicle. Now to me it looked like it should go near the top of the engine housing, but it actually doesn't. It goes about halfway down, but now it goes there. But the nice thing about it is the way Airfix have built the model, you can't really get it in a different place, which is, you know, proper handy. Like I said, it looks like it should go near the top there, like that, but it doesn't. It actually, there's a, there's a, it goes, it's about three or four mil down, but once you look at it and you see there's a couple of little pegs and you sit it on the peg, you then know that it's in the right place because it just fits nicely. What I should have done really is got like a, a, a picture book that had pictures of Shermans in it. But it's exactly the same as everything else. Held in place, a little bit of glue. Jobs are good. I have to find out what that bit's called. Right, this is this is another nice thing that old um, Airfix have done. Is that if you like, you get the clip the hull off, clean it, bit of sand, plug like all the other stuff. But anyway, it's got holes in the top. And when you turn it over, it's got rings on the top half of it so that i think it's so they can lift it onto boats onto trains and things 99 uh, percent of all models do these as a ringlet that you cut off the sprue and they go ping and never find them again because they're minute well they are in 172 scale they're minute now airfix what they do is they've now got little holes that are cut into the upper hull you cut your tiny ring off the screw which has got now got a big bit of plastic on the bottom that you can get hold of you pop that through the hole a little bit of glue job's done didn't lose a single one didn't spend a minute looking around the carpet for where they'd gone I know you can't really probably see on here because they are very small um, but literally you can pick them up by the tweezers and just yeah, like that, and then it's a little bit fiddly, but you drop them through the hole. Once you've got them in the right place, drop them through the hole, put the glue on so they stay there. And when you turn it over, you can see the loop. And they fit, they're, they're molded nicely and fit so nicely, they do look like they have molded to the outside of the hole. It's a, it's a brilliant idea. Love it.
Right, so at this point, what I decided to do is cut off one of the tracks, uh, and I'm going to hand hold it on the side of the vehicle and then place the top on to see if I can get these tracks on and off with the hull in place because the hull's not glued on at the moment. So I've got the hull, there you go. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to glue the top half on, paint it all and then retrofit the tracks after I've painted it. So at this, at this point I'm just making sure that when the tracks fit on there and I put the, uh, the hull on where it should be, so I should hold the hull and then as luck would have it, I dropped it and uh, you can see that the, uh, the tracks came off so I was able to now glue the top hole to the bottom hole so I can use that as a painting thing as it own paint the tracks on their own and paint the, the turret on their own I just, it's just an, the way I find it easier to paint armoured vehicles To be fair, well, no, it's just because I like to paint the top of the tracks and the bogies individually, really. So, turret time. Now, the, uh, my only real um, complaint about the kit is, I, I mean, I don't know because I could be wrong because I don't know what types of casts we use in what types of tanks because it's, you know, the, the tank guys know you know, when they were built, what they were built with and stuff. But it would have been nice to have a little bit of texture on the turret to make it look a little bit more like it was a piece of cast metal than just a curve. Because it's, it's, it's absolutely smooth. And I think it should have like, you know, a little bit pitted to make it look like cast steel. Careful with the guns, people. We all snap them. Lay it down on the flat on the table, scrape off the uh, flash so we don't bend them or snap them. Can't find a pound for every time I snap a gun barrel, especially on 172. <coughs> it has the option of a moving gun barrel. I, I don't like them, so I, I always glue them in place. I like to, no one's going to touch them, I'm not going to play with them. They're just for display purposes only. So what you should do is you should put the glue gun in like that, uh, put the, uh, the gun in like that, um, and then what you do is you glue the outside of it, and then you place like a little tiny, um, like a clip in, and that glues to the outsides and not the gun. So the gun moves, but the outside isn't, uh, the, the, the little cover holds it in so it doesn't fall out. The other thing I don't like about that is is that at some point it might wear a little and then the gun's always going to be sat on the front of the tank down and not up it, where, wherever you want to put it. So I put the gun where I want it and glue it in place. Pop the, pop the bottom on the turret. That will now clip into the top turn you know, like in like a key so the turret and I always do like the turrets to turn so I'll always make sure they're a little bit freer of glue but not the actual elevation on the gun so this is a quick prime with um, AK Interactive's one shot is it, one, is it AK's one shot or is it Mig Ammo's one it's well, Mig Ammo's one shot isn't it it's the one shot black primer let's leave it at that shall we the only reason I use that is because it comes out of the gun nicely and I like to have the shadows on the vehicle. The other paint I usually use is um, Tamiya's NATO Black. Thin down for the airbrush. And the little holder I've got it on is a Tamiya holder, mainly for holding car bodies. But, you know, holds lots of things so you don't get covered in paint. So that's the body black. Give the turret a once over. Lovely. <coughs> 
<clears throat> now this is um, part of the same paint kit that I painted the Brain Gun Carrier in, which is AK Interactive's World War II British Desert Colours. And this is British Yellow, British Desert Pink. Um, which is a lovely colour, it has got like a little pink, little tiny pink sort of hue to it but it's not like the Pink Panther it's a really nice colour to be fair, I'd do any desert vehicle in it well, English desert vehicle, it's a little bit too light for the axis but So what I'm going to do with these is, is paint a camouflage on them. I have two Shermans to do. This is the first of the Shermans. I may not film the other Sherman because nobody wants to see me do two Shermans. So, um, but the other Sherman will have a slightly different paint job on it in respect to I'm doing two camouflages. So after the um, desert yellow, that I'll do on the body uh, and also I'll do the bogies and stuff is I'm then going to put a dark green olive colour from the same paint pack as a camouflage colour just to give them a little, make them a little bit more interesting I like camouflage you don't often see it in the desert everything's painted desert yellow isn't it? so I'll give the um, Bogies are once over. This is what I mean by I had to go back over it with a paintbrush. So I painted those on like that, and then what I did was I went back over that with a paintbrush. I didn't film that and filled in all the bits that were black that should have been that was painted slightly by the yellow. So what's that done? Once it's dried. So this is the green, I'm going to put a nice stripy camo on with the dark olive green. Uh, and the other one will have a slightly different camo pan. Um, just because I don't think they all had the same camo pans on in the desert. I think they were all sort of taken out to the desert with probably green to be fair and then painted in these nice desert colours when they were out there. this I gave it a quick once over with um, a clear varnish just so that I, everything that I've done from now on is covered and protected so this is a quick plug for a a company called Redog Models um, and he does resin parts for any model um, and it's just generic 172 ammo boxes, tea boxes, you know, wooden boxes and tarps, tarp oil in sleeping bags, that kind of thing. Um, he, he does lots of other things so I would have a quick look at his site on, uh, on eBay. Um, and see what he does but they basically come in the little bags you snap them off the sprue bit of a clean up with a knife and some sandpaper and then you can just stick them on your model the only thing I will say is in, in order to stick them onto your model you do need super glue because they're a resin part and they, it doesn't melt with the standard um, modeling glue I can't remember what the names of it are so a little dab of super glue pick up a tarp that I've just done and stick it onto the tank just to give it that kind of lived in look you know all the lads have got their the tarp awning for the wet weather and the cold all on the side and the fact that I varnished the vehicle gives it a little bit of protection from me touching it moving it about and gluing bits on the side of it make it look a little bit more lived in but I've though that pack I've had two packs off of the dog models and 
I've used them on Tigers, Shermans, about five or six models, the Bren Gun Carrier. Really good stuff. And not expensive, that was the main thing. You're not paying a lot of money for P parts or add-ons that are quite expensive. And I paint them when they're on the vehicle with the hairy brush because I quite like using the paintbrush every so often. I painted the boxes in a dark brown, I gave them a darker brown wash and then dry brushed them with the slightly lighter brown. Uh, the tarpaulins that I didn't uh, film, I painted those in a couple of different colours. One was flat earth, so it gave it like a uh, deserty colour and the other one, but different from the vehicle itself and the other ones were in a, a khaki colour. But that's the first in a couple of videos, so I haven't got any final photos of the builds. But um, thanks for watching, thanks for liking and subscribing. Make sure you come back next time for um, more desert vehicles. Laters.